What's up guys, it's Coach Caglion back here again, and today we're talking about beltless training. So whether you're a competitive lifter or not, uh, there's definitely some merit in some beltless training. And the concept that I like to, uh, I actually first heard this kind of term uh, from Mark Bell, uh, is called underloading. So a lot of people talk about overload. Uh, and some, some, some examples of overload training might be doing something like a reverse band or chains. Uh, doing things like heavy walkouts or partials, and that's going to allow you to use more than uh, your current one rep max, at least at least for a given range of motion, whether it's partial range of motion or not. And overload training can be very helpful, especially when approaching a meet, uh, when you're trying to stimulate your central nervous system uh, and allow your body to recruit more motor units and things like that. Uh, but there are some times, especially uh, let's say after a training cycle or after a contest, where you'd want to actually use less weight. So the concept of under, underloading, uh, it's just, you know, like it's a good way to think about it. So you have overloading and underloading. So underloading could be a good thing to utilize uh, when you're coming off a training cycle. You just finished a meet, or maybe you've had a, a long layover and you want to kind of get back into training. So by utilizing a concept of underloading, uh, you're going to utilize exercises that are going to create a bigger muscular stimulus with less overall lo load. Some quick examples of this, obviously you could change the exercise themselves, like doing a high bar squat uh, versus a low bar squat, uh, like with a, deep, with a deeper range of motion, things like that, or a close skirt bench versus a wide skirt bench, things like that. But a really simple way to do that is actually just taking your competition equipment off. So really, the easiest way to do this is obviously take your belt off, okay? Uh, one, one thing that's really important to note as well, when just talking about utilizing a belt and things like that, uh, there's different kind of levels of using the belt and it's really important that we still understand uh, that we want to breathe and brace regardless. So a lot of people, especially beginners, when they're using a belt, they're going to use it more passively and they're going to crank it really tight. So what I recommend also is when you're using a belt, especially when you're first learning and you're maybe a novice or early intermediate, is you want to be able to kind of put your thumbs in it and actually be able to Use your, use your diaphragm, compress in three dimensions, so you're going to expand out in the sides, the front, and the back. So I'm really filling this up with air. So that's really important that we understand that the belt is just a tool, and we don't want to use it as a crutch. So when we take this off, it's going to allow us to use lighter loads and get a greater muscular stimulus. If you are a beginner and you're still learning, another good method when you're doing kind of beltless training is you can utilize something like a mini band as well. If you're still learning the breathing and bracing concepts, so you can take something like a mini band, because this is not going to really provide you any support, but it's going to give you some feedback and still make sure that we're using our diaphragm and expanding in all directions. So this can give you some feedback. So if you are a beginner and you want to do some beltless training uh, using something like a mini band, so again, I want to compress. So if this is my diaphragm is like a balloon, it's going to compress down. So I'm going to breathe in and expand out in all three directions. And we have some other videos on our channel on breathing and bracing if you're more interested in that. And once we put the belt back on, it's going to help us be stronger. So in beltless work, uh, we recommend it's a great time to do it is right after a contest. Just kind of take your belt off and kind of start to use, you can start to use really light weights. It could be anywhere in like that 50, 55, 60, 65 range. So something probably under 70%. And then you can kind of build up just linearly a little bit each week. So maybe for most, for the average trainee, with average strength, you might just increase like your uh, poundages by maybe 10 pounds on a squat and deadlift every week and then maybe five pounds on a bench press. If you're a lighter weight male or a female or someone that's a little bit weaker, then obviously you can do small, you can use micro plates and just anywhere from like two to five pounds per week, you can kind of progress that way. But that beltless training is a really great way to kind of build a good foundation and kind of unload your spine a little bit and get utilize that concept of underloading so you're gonna have a greater muscular stimulus with less overall weight. So some great exercises to do when you're utilizing some beltless training. Uh, you could do things like high bar squats. You could do things like front squats if you have the mobility for it. You could do things like stiff-legged deadlifts or just beltless deadlifts or uh, deadlifts from a deficit. So you want to use utilize exercises that are going to maybe have a little bit more range of motion. Uh, maybe you're going to utilize a little less load. So you can use that in combination with the beltless training. Start to build up your, your core strength a little bit. If you're stronger without the belt, when you, once you add the belt back in, it's going to allow you to be that much stronger uh, with it. The key is learning to utilize the brace with, with and without the belt. So that way when you put the belt back on, you could actually you know, maximize 
the, the potential of it. You still need to make sure that you're really utilizing your you know, breathing and bracing muscles, engaging your lats, rooting your feet in the floor and all, and all that good stuff. But the bellows training is great to do early on in a training cycle. So probably when you're doing bellows training, you're going to probably use somewhere from the 5 to 6 upwards to the 8 to 10 rep range. And like I said, you could start off uh, pretty light, like 50 to 60% of maybe your max, and then kind of go from there. Um, it's really important when you're doing beltless training, especially if you're new to beltless training, uh, that you utilize a weight that you can handle with good form. Especially if your core is a little bit weak and maybe you're one of those people that really crank down on the belt and you kind of use it a little bit more passively versus actively, uh, you may need to use a little bit even lighter weight. Uh, so depending on what your core strength is and how proficient you are actually usually utilizing the, the breathing and the bracing with the belt versus just passively kind of cranking down on the belt, you may need to lower your weights even more. Uh, but regardless, the beltless training is a great way to, to kind of utilize that kind of underloading method. You can kind of use less weights and get a greater muscular stimulus, help build up your core strength, and build a great foundation. So once you start to put your competition equipment back on, or if you're a recreational left you just start to utilize your belt again. It's a kind of great way to build a foundation early on in the training cycle uh, and kind of make sure that you kind of give your spine and joints a little bit of a break, but while still kind of pushing your workouts and making sure they're challenging. So. That's uh, why you want to utilize beltless training, uh, uh, beltless training in your program. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Make sure you like and subscribe uh, to our channel for, for more updates, and we'll see you next time.